Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode. We're going to be working on unit 5, lessons 5 and 6 today. Our topic is still holidays. Let's get started with our objectives. We're going to be expressing how he or she is feeling using basic expressions. We're going to express facts and points of view. We will explain orally, verbally and non-verbally. We're going to be looking at age-appropriate texts, example signs, and we're going to be learning vocabulary such as how exciting, really, oh dear, wow, that's interesting, oh no, what a pity. And for language, we're going to be working on the past simple tense. As for values, we're going to be discussing or learning more about respect for rules. And the general issue for the unit is environmental responsibility. So I'd like you to listen and answer the question, what ate Mezen's ice cream? What did you do yesterday, Mezen? I went to the zoo. Oh, that's interesting. Did you enjoy the day? No, I didn't. Oh dear, why not? Well, First, we went to see the monkeys, but they were all very tired. I think they were in bed. What a pity! So, you didn't see them? No, we didn't. Then we went into a cave to see the bats, but it was dark and I didn't see anything. What did you do next? Then we bought an ice cream and went to see the elephants. It was bath time for them. Wow, how exciting! Yes, I enjoyed that, but then something bad happened. Oh no, what happened? An elephant ate my ice cream! Now you can rewind and listen again and then put these pictures in the correct order of what happened. Let's check together. Of course, number one is Mezen's ice cream was eaten by an elephant. So an elephant ate Mezen's ice cream. As for number two, let's put the pictures in the correct order. So B1, that's the first picture. As for number Two, it is D. Number two is D. He went to the cave and there were lots of bats. Three is A. Then they went to get ice cream. And of course, number four is C. The elephant ate the ice cream. Now, I'd like you to match the responses from the listening activity to the correct emotion. So we have, how exciting? Really? Oh dear! Wow! That's interesting! Oh no! And what a pity! So, if you want to show that you're happy with the smiley face, you can say, how exciting! Or wow! Or that's interesting! But if you want to show that you're thinking about something or you're feeling surprised, you can say, really? And last but not least, you can show that you're sad by saying, oh dear, or oh no, or what a pity. Now you can listen again and repeat the expressions in exercise three. Remember when to use each expression. You can show happiness and excitement by saying, how exciting, or wow, or that's interesting. You can show that you're thinking or that you're very surprised by saying, really? And you can show sadness by saying, oh dear, or oh no, or what a pity. Now we're going to work in pairs. You need to find a partner, could be your friend on the phone, or it could be a family member. Take turns to be A and B. So, student A must make a sentence about something they did 
or something that happened to them yesterday, and they must tell their partner. As for student E, must use some of the expressions in exercise B. So you can use how exciting, or really, or oh dear, or wow, or that's interesting, or oh no, or what a pity. Now let's look at values. I'd like you to look at these signs. What do you think they mean? Let's look at number one together. There's a picture hanging on the wall of a man throwing something in a trash can. Of course, number one is put your litter in your bin or put your litter in your trash can. Let's look at picture two. Okay, this seems to look like some kind of museum or gallery and there's a picture hanging on the wall that says no cameras allowed or no photos allowed. So if you go to a museum, do not take photos. Number three. Now, there is a picture hanging that you are not allowed to wear slippers or shorts or sandals or shorts. Do not wear sandals or shorts. And last but not least, we have a picture of a foot on some grass and there's an X on it, which means do not walk on the grass. Do not walk on the grass. Now we're going to move to our reading section. I'd like you to look at the photo. Can you guess where it is? You can see the Eiffel Tower. You can see the macaroons and you can see the beautiful, beautiful greenery and flowers. Okay, so we're going to read Fatima's email and find two places she visited on her holiday to Paris. The first one is done for us. It is the Eiffel Tower. Okay, so let's read together and then go back to the questions in exercise two. From Fatima to Azza. Subject, my holiday. Hi, Azza. I'm back from my holiday in Paris. I had a wonderful time. Paris is a great city for a holiday because there is so much to see and do. The food is delicious. I ate a lot of new things. For example, snails. One day, we climbed the Eiffel Tower and from the top, we had a view of the city. We visited museums and had a picnic in the Luxembourg Gardens. We also went on a boat on the river Seine. What a pity! We did not have time to go to the Science Museum. I wanted to see the art at the Louvre, but it was closed. Near our hotel, there was a busy market. I bought a t-shirt and some postcards. I bought you a souvenir. It is a very small Eiffel Tower. You can put it next to your bed. It has got a light on the top. See you soon, Fatma. Now let's go back to exercise. Two. Where are the two places she visited on her holiday to Paris? Of course, she visited the Eiffel Tower. She visited museums. She visited the Luxembourg Gardens and a market. So you can choose one more item and add it to the places she has visited. Let's move on to question two. Where has she stayed or where did she stay? She stayed at a hotel. She stayed at a hotel. Number three. What is something she ate? Do you remember something strange that she ate? Of course, she ate snails. Did anyone ever taste snails before? Let's move on to number four. Two things she bought. The two things she bought were a t-shirt and some postcards. And of course, she bought a souvenir. So you can choose only two things and add them to your answers. Number five. 
What is something she did not have time to do and she was disappointed or sad that she couldn't visit there? Of course, that was the science museum. So she did not have time to go to the science museum. Let's jump to our writing section. Write an email about a holiday. Answer the questions and give some examples. Where did you go? Who did you go with? Where did you stay? What did or didn't you do or see or visit or eat? And how did you travel? And did you enjoy your holiday? Why or why not? So, I'd like you to look at the email that was sent previously in this lesson and I'd like you to look at the writing tips as well. So, in order to write a correct, well-structured email, you must have a header such as from, to, and subject. So, you have to choose your email. You have to choose your email as a sender and then you have to add the email of the person receiving the email and the subject, you must have a subject for your email. Then you can start your greeting with hi, hello, or even dear. And then write your body, which is the topic or the things you will mention and talk about. And of course, when you finish typing your email, you must have a closing such as best wishes, yours, see you soon, and then you sign your name at the end. Now, for our exit slip of the day, I want you to use two vocabulary words, snail and tower, in two sentences of your choice. Remember, to write capital letters and correct end marks. This was Ms. Sara Bastioni. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.